Welcome to Indianomics. By far the most important data set provided by the NSO, the National Statistics Organization, is the All India Household Consumption and Expenditure Survey. The results of the latest survey done between August 22 and July 2023 have just been released. These surveys tell us what Indian families consume. And it is based on this data that the CPI inflation index and even the GDP is constructed. What makes the latest survey special is that it comes after an 11-year gap because the intervening a survey, one done in 2017, was controversially cancelled. So, what are the key takeaways from this much-awaited survey? I have with me three top economists to decode that. Mridul Sagar, Professor of Finance and Macroeconomics at IIM Koi Code and former Reserve Bank of India member of the Monetary Policy Committee. Saumya Kanti Ghosh, Chief Economic Advisor at State Bank of India and Samiran Chakrabarti, City India's Chief Economist. Gentlemen, thank you very much for sparing time for me. Shamiran, I want to start with you because I just have your report and your uh, first takeaway is that the growth in consumption from 2011-12 to 22-23 was slower than the growth in consumption in the previous eight years, if you can elaborate. So, Lata, uh, if you look at the current survey uh, for 2022-23, uh, and compare it with 2011-12 numbers, and then compare 2011-12 with the 2004-05 numbers, what comes out quite clearly is that the nominal growth in expenditure for both rural and urban have slowed down in the 2011-12 to 2022-23 period. And if you adjust it for inflation, then the gap is narrower. Mm. So in other words, inflation was higher in the 2004-05 to 2011-12 period. So to that extent, it gets uh, counterbalanced. Uh, and we get that the real growth in consumption in uh, rural and urban areas is about 3.2 and 2.8 percent, respectively, for the 2011-12 to 2022-23 uh, period. But we also note that this is substantially lower than the real consumption growth that we find in the GDP data. The GDP data is actually showing close to a 6% uh, consumption growth all through this period without much deviation between these two subcomponents. And we also find that this consumption growth, the nominal consumption growth for rural and urban is slower than the nominal household disposable income growth that we have seen between 2011-12 and 2022-23, which is quite perplexing mm. in a period when household leverage has actually uh, gone up. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I guess survey data and, uh, you know, the holistic data like uh, GDP or national income are likely to differ. But, uh, Shomyo, well, this slight slowing of the pace of growth, let's, let's be under no uh, mistaken assumption of the growth itself. Consumption is clearly growing across all categories, across all fractiles, bottom five, top five, any, any category you take. Growth is very much there, but it's a little slower than the previous term, uh, the previous eight years. But Shobhya, perhaps it is more because of COVID, you think? Yeah, Lata, I think uh, uh, I'll just add a little bit different perspective what Shobhya said. My uh, point is that I think the first thing from the survey data, when you look at the survey data, actually it shows that the rural is actually doing better than the urban, in fact, much better than the urban. So this is the first thing which comes out of the data. The second important point which comes out from the data and that actually includes the COVID period is that if you look into the difference of the rural and the urban consumption expenditure as a percentage, mm. you will find that the ratio is down from 90% to 70% yeah. across all fractile classes. And the important point to note is that at the lowest fractile classes, which is basically the 0 to 5 and the 5 to 10%, this gap is lower than 50%, mm. indicating that what is happening in the rural side is perhaps the government programs which is running that is having a salutary impact at the bottom end of the pyramid. So therefore, when you compare this inequality within the rural class, 
across different factors, you will also find that this, there is a decline in the vertical consumption inequality. Yeah. So in whatever sense you look into the data, uh, I'm not talking about the nominal and the okay. aggregate sense, but in terms of the inequality and the vertical sense in within okay. rural, within urban, and across horizontal loss of rural to urban, okay. that shows distinct okay. decline. All right. I, I'll come to inequality in a bit. I first wanted growth, but the next most important thing has to be inflation. And we have a former MPC member, so uh, straight away to you, Mridul. Uh, the uh, CPI index is created out of the survey results. So, uh, if you can parse the results on that ground, uh, we should see a lower weightage for food, is it, in the coming indexes? Well, definitely, yes, Lata. I mean, the weight of food will fall. I mean, it was... Uh, something known to us that uh, since the 2017-18 survey is not available, there could be upward bias on the inflation arising from the food. Uh, but uh, like looking into the data, my impression now is that uh, upward bias may not be very large mm. in that period. Uh, so we, we are seeing here a phenomena where sort of like, uh, yes, there has been a shift away from the cereals, but the share of food has not fallen all that much as one would expect from the angel's law. Mm -hmm. I, uh, when, when this transition really takes place, I mean, with growth, obviously for every country, the share of food would fall. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are seeing because the gap is like 11 years. So the numbers may look a little mm -hmm. stark. I mean, uh, yeah. the delta which exists mm. of over six percentage points. Uh, uh, but 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 then there is the shift away from cereals, but it's also in favor of milk, mm. uh, protein mm. items and stuff. So uh, one has to wait and watch. See, mm. the CPI revisions is not going to come very quickly. I mean, it, there's still work at hand. I mean, we as users expect that the moment numbers mm. are out, we should have the mystery all clear. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I mean, it's also noticeable that only, you know, 22, 23 results have come out. Yeah. It's yet to be corroborated by the follow-up survey next year, okay. I mean, in the coming year. Yeah. So, uh, the NSS round is not available. Okay. Yeah, so the July, uh, 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 July 2024, I guess those uh, surveys will be done and they will have to corroborate the 22-23 uh, survey. But, you know, Mridul is making a very important point. Even now, 46% of a rural household's uh, income uh, or consumption is constituted by food. I mean, one would assume that as economies progress and prosper, you will spend less on food and more on others. 46 is still very large, though it is much less than the 52% 11 years ago. It is still a large number. That point is well taken. But, uh, uh, Samiran... See, you know, what is the uh, Reserve Bank's state of mind at this point in time? Core inflation is falling rapidly at 3.6% and uh, food inflation is sticking high at 86 Now that the weightage of food ought have been lower, even from, you know, 23 onwards, then the Reserve Bank would, should logically be in a better position to cut or at least be dovish, isn't it? So, Lata, we have uh, taken a stab at this uh, problem uh, by trying to uh, recalculate last three years' uh, inflation numbers uh, based on uh, the current shares of different items that have come from uh, the Household Consumer Expenditure Survey. Uh, I'm not saying that this is a perfect analysis. Uh, even in the past, the shares in the Consumer Expenditure Survey versus the share in CPI have not perfectly matched. Mm -hmm. And as Mridul was mentioning, there is going to be another uh, round of this survey uh, later this year. Uh, but with all those caveats, we see that over the last three years, the average difference between the newly constructed CPI and the old index is between 30 to 40 basis points, okay. which is not a very large one. Mm -hmm. Also, one needs to be careful that going forward, we are all expecting headline CPI to come off primarily because of food converging towards coal. So if the share of food act actually comes off in the index, then to that extent, the decline in inflation will be uh, relatively lower than what we were uh, factoring in. So that's also another way to look at it, not just to just say that uh, food uh, being lower means that headline inflation would be lower. 
Uh, but it, I must say that with a lower share of food, mm. uh, the volatility on the inflation estimate should be uh, going forward uh, that much lower. Uh, no, I, I want to persist with this, Somyo. Like uh, Samiran also pointed out, uh, I would assume that if food is not 46% of the basket, uh, at the moment it's 459 if you take the current average of the new survey results, then it should logically come down to about 42 or 43 percent. So if what Samiran says is exactly what the RBI thinks, that, you know, the CPI index is about 30, 40 basis points lower, then we should be more comfortable uh, with uh, lowering rates, isn't it? We are currently looking at a declining inflation trajectory. Mm. So, in a de so if we also compare the com inflation numbers in an increasing inflation trajectory and in a declining inflation trajectory. Mm. When the, if you remember when the inflation was increasing, I think it was seven point eight percent at the beginning of when the RBI started to raise the rates. That number, if you recalculate by using the total rates, that number actually goes up to 8%. Okay. But if you recalculate with the current rates, the latest number of 5.1% uh, uh, goes yeah. down to 4.8%. Mm. So over a point of time, as the share of food declines, but if the share of food increases, mm. it, it, so that means that it will average out. Okay. So on the net net, we, we actually currently the inflation will look much better because we are, the inflation is declining. Okay. But once it starts rising, I think in that case, the inflation number could be a little bit higher okay. than it's currently oh. being rated. Okay. So okay. that's going to be the overall trend. Yeah. You know, and I, I was just looking at the nearer term, uh, you know, around mid 2024, the Reserve Bank's own forecast is 4% uh, inflation for uh, uh, the, the third quarter. And if food is actually lower, then perhaps we will get uh, a sub-4 number, technically speaking, and uh, therefore will the Reserve Bank be a little more comfortable. Uh, in any case, core inflation is declining even because of global factors like China. But uh, let me come back to the data. The more important point is what is the uh, learning on poverty? What is the learning on inequality? And what is the learning on the breakup of consumption? Uh, how much is being spent on consumer durables? The other takeaways, in a minute, we are back after a break.